You're listening. You're singing. To that gets my goat. That get my goat. <laughs> okay, what are we goating getting? Hi, everybody. My name's Big Anklevich. <laughs> I'm still hiding from the fart. <laughs> you keep hiding because I'm gonna <laughs> fart some more. He's so Hi, everybody. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. Welcome to that gets my goat. Does it feel like it's been a long time since we've done one of these? It does. It's been such a long time. Be such a long time. <laughs> I don't know the rest. I don't know me either. I was going to say the next line in the lyrics, but I was just like, I think I must be going, or I, I found a distant listen. highway. I'm about to do it, Steve. <laughs> I don't know the next words. But yeah, hi, everybody. It's, it's us again. We're goat getting. Yes, and it's very late, but we haven't done one of these in like three weeks so i figured let's hurry and do one uh, well, actually we've got a lot to talk about so it would be great if we could get a couple of these in the bag but first of all uh what's what's on your mind what did you want to well, go I, get about i thought it would be interesting i mean this is this is kind of a uh, late thing to be getting around to but i was watching the non gay man super bowl the other day uh, a while ago actually now and uh right after that they put on this show that was all for gay men um it's called glee I think you watch it, right? I, I am familiar <laughs> with it. <laughs> they did a special Glee to go on after the Super Bowl. I'm not sure why, because Glee is already like their most popular show. And you would think if they want to get a bunch of people interested in a show, I mean, they get a big audience for the Super Bowl. They ought to put on a show that's struggling a little bit, but is funny and just needs somebody to notice it. And then that show can take off but instead they just put on glee which is already fox's biggest show and so they did a special glee to go after the super bowl and you watched it well yes i did yeah interestingly enough my wife and my friend's wife who had come over to watch the super bowl at our house they didn't care about the super bowl at all surprisingly enough because it's the non-gay man super bowl they just wanted to see (laughs) i don't know are you insinuating that your wife and your Friends, wives are both gay men? <laughs> no. I forgot we were in Vermont, Todd. <laughs> They're women, which is the same thing. Okay. <laughs> sure, Sir Elton would disagree with you, but... Maybe we should cut that part out. <laughs> no, we don't cut things out of that gets my goat. We don't? Really? Okay, so they didn't care about the Super Bowl. Yeah, they're women, so... It's similar to being a gay man, right? I didn't care about the Super Bowl. Um, There you go. So, uh, yeah, they weren't interested in the Super Bowl, but they were all set for this episode of Glee that was coming afterwards. And I'd heard you talk about Glee before, and I've seen commercials for Glee. It's it's the big thing, right? Apparently, like, the cast of Glee now has more number one hits or something like that than Elvis Presley and the Beatles combined in the last two years. They've put out every single song that has been done on the show, and each one of them is rocketed straight to number one on the Hot 100 Billboard list. So, you know, it's kind of a big deal. So I watched it. You were just joking about the Elvis thing, right? I mean, it's not like that shit that Mariah Carey used to say where she had more number ones than the Beatles and Elvis. And you'd be like, uh-huh, yes. Okay, every single one of your number <laughs> ones is exactly the same song. Not joking. So I watched it. I've heard you complain a little bit about it before, where you're saying that you like kind of the idea of Glee. But I don't like how it is. But, yeah, the execution well, of it leaves a little... Let, let me define... If, if Let's say that there's somebody listening who has never seen the show. Imagine, if you will, there's that reality show called The Biggest Loser. Imagine, if you will, the reality show called The Biggest Loser. Every week on The Biggest Loser, do, do you know what the... Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a show about really, really fat people, and they go to basically a fat camp where they have trainers that whip them and have dogs chase after them so that they'll lose weight by exercising, and they starve them, and, and eventually by the end of the show... Okay, maybe that's exaggerating things a little bit. By the end of the show, they've lost a lot of weight, and they're now thin human beings again perfect i paul you crystallized my thoughts eloquently thank you glee is 
the season finale of The Biggest Loser every week. Okay. You don't don't see any of the suffering. You don't see any of the practice. You don't see any of the hard work. It's just perfect, svelte, healthy people every week. And I hate that. The whole point of watching The Biggest Loser, not that I would, but if I did, would be to watch these people earn their their attractive bodies. Right. Or it's like, oh, geez, this guy was 500 pounds, and now he's 287 or something like that, and he worked his yeah. ass off. To see the progress. But you turn on Glee, and it's just like, hey, here's a 287-pound guy. Let's watch him sing. I hate that because I I know what it's like to work on something and to practice and to rehearse and you get better and you get better and then finally you perform it or whatever. But but you never see any of that. There's no struggle. You hand the music to somebody. Here's a song that we're going to be singing this week and people start to sing it and it's perfect and there's no screw ups and there's no there's there's choreography <laughs> that somehow they all know and each one knows their part and they're all dancing around and singing. And there's no effort. There's no sweat. They're, they don't earn any of it. Sorry. That's interesting. You see, the thing that really kind of bugged me with my first viewing of Glee is just how overly polished every song that they sing is. The Isn't that what I just said? Right. No, but I'm, you're talking more about how they didn't have to learn it. You don't see them learn this on the show. But... The, oh no! no. Well, okay, but but the choreography I was just talking about is like right. why? Why is that necessary? Why do they need to be dancing around and spinning around? And there's fireworks and there's jet light changes. <laughs> Seriously, this happens every week, and it, it's the morning of their class where the the teacher has just given them their assignment, and so it's so bombastic and over the top and overproduced that I cannot connect to that. That doesn't happen in reality. There's nothing there. And now every once in a while, it's a fantasy sequence. Like Rachel is imagining what would happen if she and Finn were together. And that, I'm fine. I'm fine if every single person in the hall starts to dance in sync. Because that's a fantasy. It's like a dream sequence or whatever. Uh-huh. But it, the, just the, the, the thousands of dollars that would have been spent on producing this sh- performance that's on the stage to just Mr. Schuster. No, nobody else. You're just like, wait, why? What? Or, or suddenly there's a band and an orchestra and violinists that stepped out of the darkness and they happen to be there. Uh-huh. I just oh that bothers me so much. I'm sorry. I will stop yelling. But I've seen 22 of these suckers, and you've seen one. <laughs> okay, so go. Yeah, it's just, it, the the thing that bugs me is just like the poppiness, the auto tuneness of the songs. They they come out. You know, they've got echo. They've got the drum machine going in the background. They've got yeah the the one that I saw. You know, they they made the football players join the glee club so that the football players would get along and be able to win their game or whatever and uh, they come in and they're like oh glee club that's lame glee, glee club is for gays or whatever and then oh yeah well watch this we're gonna show you what it's all about and the guy with the mohawk and the chick get out and they sing that lady antebellum song i think it is okay. about being drunk and wanting to score in the middle of the night and they just start singing and they the guys playing a guitar i think and the girls just singing but you can hear drums and you can hear a bunch of things and then at one point they kind of widen out and you see that there's people actually that are supposed to be this accompanying band in the background that are playing this stuff like what are they doing where did they come from but yeah it's it's that that overproducedness of all the songs that they they don't ever do like oh yeah let's do this and and they do like a really cool acapella version of the song or they don't do the you know the practice or the whatever it's immediately ready for the album pop song yeah i don't know it just bugs me and i guess that's why they've got a hundred thousand number one hits already is because every single song on the show is ready to be put on an album i guess i understand that thing and i have enjoyed a lot of their performances when it's handled in in a a, a way that doesn't push me away and that's the funny thing about the show i don't hate the show i've watched the entire first season 
and I wouldn't not watch it if there weren't something in every single episode, although there was one stinker of an episode, but if there weren't something in every single episode that speaks to me or makes me laugh or makes me continue to watch, I wouldn't do it anymore. But it's almost evenly split the things that frustrate the hell out of me (laughs) and the things that I really respond to and I like and I enjoy. And for me, that's so strange because anything else, I mean, we're talking Star Wars prequels. About 50% of the prequels yeah, that's good stuff. And the other 50 is not. But I hate the Star Wars prequels. Uh, right. You know, I just, it, I can't really explain it what it is. But the things that work really work. And there's, there's a black humor, a dark comedy sort of thing that goes on on the show that I really respond to. You know, just like quirky, really sick humor. Of, and, and, you know, just the, the, the Sue Sylvester stuff. 90% of what she says and does on the show, I love mm-hmm. because she's so maniacally evil, unrepentantly <laughs> corrupt and all that stuff. And I just, that that's really cool. But then they'll do something and almost every single episode will have some pandering moment. You know, you look at the Glee Club class and it's just a rainbow of United colors of Benetton, different <laughs> shapes and sizes and skin tones and hues and, and gender identities. And, and there'll be something that'll hit you over the head. Now, I'm not always, and it's not always Kurt, because Kurt is my favorite character on the show. He's the gay one. But, you know, every once in a while, there'll be some silly agenda thing or, or there'll be something that's so forced that I'll just shudder and, and I'll want to push it away and I'll realize this show isn't made for me and I shouldn't be watching it. I, I don't know if that speaks to you. If there was ever, you know, some time when you were a kid and you turned on the TV and you're like, oh, I shouldn't be watching this, you know, kind of thing. And, and that's how I feel sometimes on the show. I, I don't really know that much about the background of the show, but I know that one of Fox's stipulations was you're going to have a 50-50 split of classic music or old music and brand new hits so that you know we can have stuff from right now to catch those tweens or whatever that never have heard of anything pre pink or pre <laughs> taylor swift or pre whoever it might be that's popular right now and won't be popular six months from now and whenever that happens and you know, you're hearing a bon jovi song or you're hearing a eric clapton song or you're hearing a Beatles song, and then suddenly you hear Katy Perry. a Kesha song or an Usher song or something like that. I'll just be like, "Oh, it's so schizophrenic! Wait, why are you doing this? Why? Wait, why?" And oh, and when they'll do the mashups of an old and a new song, I just it feels so arbitrary to me. And in that Super Bowl episode, in all the commercials, they were saying, you know, they're going to do Thriller today, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, Thriller from my childhood! This iconic, awesome, wow!" It speaks to me on every level. Uh And at one point, one of the characters in the episode says, oh, we're going to do Thriller. Every school does that. And I was like, in what Rod Serling world (laughs) does every school do that? No, they don't. Nobody would put that much time and effort into learning a zombie choreographed dance number. Nobody does that. But they're like, so we got to switch it up. So we're going to put two songs in there. There's there's this hip hop song that we're going to overlay with Thriller. It wasn't enough that they painted these guys with $10,000 of zombie makeup on each. (laughs) (laughs) And they're all out there, the perfectly lit... They got all these moves. God forbid somebody should step on somebody else's line or forget a song lyric or whatever. I just, I feel like a hypocrite when I have so many problems with the show, but I continue to watch it. But when it works, it's really good. Like Joss Whedon directed an episode in the first season, and it was about as close to a perfect episode as you can get where there was almost nothing that was cloying or nothing that was forced or nothing that was so phony that I actually strained my brain from rolling my eyes so hard. I guess maybe it's a fine line or it's a juggling act of something that you have to pull off in each episode. And I realize that I'm not the target audience for this thing, so I should just be grateful that there's ever a moment that speaks to me or ever something that moves me. Yeah, you think about what exactly is the target audience. I guess it's the teenagers and, and the tweens, the folks that dug high school, high school musicals, musicals so yeah. much, and now they want that, something that's like that. 
Oh, shoot. We've been going for a long time. Uh, maybe we need to stop here. That's probably a good idea. We'll okay, so we'll pick up next time where we left off. All right, see you later, folks. Good night. That Gids My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license for some reason.